Hey everyone, Adrian here. I, this time I've got a time lapse of some sketches, line art, and flats for you. Uh, so if you had been following me back in October, I was doing the Inktober challenge. And so that means we were drawing something traditionally or ink uh, every day uh, of the month. So to make it easier on myself, I chose to just work with uh, one of each of my dragon base characters, or Dracon, um, which since I had 30 of them, that pretty much made up almost every day easily and then just recently I had a poll to see which one was at the moment most popular and use that to choose uh, the subject of this time lapse uh, there's going to be more to this uh, since this ultimately took a little more time than intended so next week there will be a part two to all this so for right now this is going to be headshots uh, in any case this one's name is Vinta she was designed only a few years ago uh, I had been I had done a kind of a request thing with some of my friends to pick a few different combinations uh, uh, elements and stuff available to kind of help decide some design for a few of these and I chose about had about five of them out of this and so this one was created around that time um, talking more about kind of process with sketching these I've kind of started using a uh, usually a blue or sometimes a red colored brush uh, I find it's easier to read sometimes when doing sketches like this uh, and often in that case I do use, uh, use it with a white background although for contrast purposes sometimes it's easier on your eyes to use a kind of a neutral gray uh, in certain cases it may help with eye strain and the like over, if you're doing it over a long period of time but in general I think some of the more opacity related matters or the value levels of using a different color than black or gray just makes it a little easier to read when you're working with this and sometimes instead of using a more pencil like brush I will use a an oil style brush and kind of actually uh, paint and kind of smudge my way into something when more when I'm trying to get the forms uh, sometimes more often like out of something less familiar or something like that it helps more to build from forms instead of uh, raw lines and that in the case of line art uh, I usually do use just a straight black or gray. In fact, I don't. I find I don't like using a solid black or a solid white for anything. Uh, usually, I work with a about ten to twenty percent uh, black, so or very very dark gray. It just seems to work just a little bit better. Uh, and then usually size wise is dependent on the canvas uh, I tend to stick close to around a 7 pixel size brush and it usually gives enough room for uh, for line weighting uh, and then when you're dealing more with like small details uh, swapping that out for a thinner brush which I usually drop to around three to five pixels and also drop the opacity on those both uh, I find usually has the best 
the best effect. Uh, something you probably might notice as you're watching this is I have a tendency to jump around uh, a good bit. And that usually as I move along, I find something about a prior shape that I worked with is maybe bugging me a little bit. Uh, something that kind of part of it is, of course, is it's something that I didn't necessarily realize I had a little more off, or it's, or it's not, you know, mixing with another part well enough that it justifies changing it. Uh, another thing that I've kind of also figured out in that same vein is uh, knowing that the contrast between thickness of lines and stuff, of course, isn't r really going to become evident until you have enough examples of that of that thinner or, or of that difference in line type, and you might you might feel some of that sameness happening up to a point. Uh, and it kind of, it might mess with you a little bit, which is probably part of why I go back and forth often. Uh, sometimes I just need to to fill in some of those thinner details just to have it start feeling right sooner. But that's been more of a matter of preference. And then, of course, after I think doing it all is when you really more so go back and you thicken certain lines or stuff like that. Uh, when you kind of step back and get a better sense of the total read of everything. Speaking of read, and something that never almost reads right to me is any kind of front facing shot with anything that doesn't really have a flat face. So if you've been paying attention, I've been fumbling around more with the middle face just because of that. Um, I think that might be grounds for me to start building a 3D model uh, and just for the sake of having that reference that I can kind of familiarize myself with more acceptable angles from that. Eh. Now, in terms of the flats here, something that I did beforehand was I, as you can kind of see in the small window to the side, is I had already created a uh, kind of a sketch of the overall body type, and I had figured out my color palette there, and I had you know run that by a few friends to see what they. What they thought because it's always best not to design in a vacuum uh, you have your biases and will probably miss little things and uh, having someone else look at it they'll usually catch something like that um, but even then I had only really sorted out from the back which kind of figured out 90% of the of the figure out 90% of the palette but then when applying it to the faces, uh, sometimes, you know, you have a different, uh, well, the layout of the colors throughout the face are often more compressed in a sense. And though they might play nicely in a different area of the body overall, when you have them in that small zone that you're having to consider, uh, sometimes you may find it's worth addressing more changes and then, you know, going back to the overall, uh, making adjustments to the palette from there. So it, it takes, a, sometimes it says so seeing them at different angles to see how they, uh, how they play off of each other. At one angle, something might look right, but at a different one, you might realize it does not work so well uh, and you'll kind of see that 
I was you know, fumbling around figuring out how to use these greens and blues together uh, and then how much of kind of a reddish accent uh, eh, maroon red purple in that area what kind of accent that I wanted to make use of in that but uh Anyways, from there, uh, this will be, like say, just part one, uh, and we'll move on to the next one here next week. If you like this video, uh, please consider leaving a comment below, especially if there's something you'd like me to talk about in the next video. Also, leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.